Hello, I'm Eileen McHugh with the BBC News. The United States, Britain and Australia have announced a defence and security pact. The three countries believe the agreement will be vital to defending their shared interests in the Indo-Pacific region where they have concerns about China's growing military presence. Speaking in Washington, President Biden outlined the deal. This initiative is about making sure that each of us has a modern capability, the most modern capabilities we need to maneuver and defend against rapidly evolving threats. We are launching consultations with Australia's acquisition of conventionally armed nuclear-powered submarines for its Navy, conventionally armed. I want to be exceedingly clear about this. We're not talking about nuclear-armed submarines. These are conventionally armed submarines that are powered by nuclear reactors. This technology is proven. It's safe. President Biden has expressed complete confidence in his top general, Mark Milley, who's been accused of treason by Donald Trump. A new book has revealed that General Milley had twice spoken to his Chinese counterpart, General Li Zhuang, amid concerns that the then-President Trump might spark a war. Barbara Pletusha reports. Excerpts from the book say General Milley made the calls last October and January, just before the presidential election and after Donald Trump refused to accept his defeat. The general was reportedly responding to Chinese concerns about the political turmoil and fears of a U.S. attack. The authors say General Milley assured his counterpart that the U.S. was not planning action, but said he would warn the Chinese if Mr. Trump did order a strike. They say General Milley himself was gravely concerned about Donald Trump's mental state and called his deputies together to make sure he would be informed if the president sought to launch a nuclear weapon. Mr. Trump and some Republicans have said General Milley should be fired and tried for treason. The International Criminal Court has authorized an investigation into the president of the Philippines, Rodrigo Duterte, for possible crimes against humanity. Michael Bristow has more details. Mr Duterte has been doing all he can to neuter and resist this investigation. He stopped anyone in the Philippines employed by the government from taking part or cooperating with this investigation and has taken the Philippines outside the International Criminal Court. But that didn't come into effect until March 2019. And the court says up until that point, the Philippines was still part of the court, so it still comes under its jurisdiction. The director of the FBI in the United States, Christopher Wray, has apologized for failings in the investigation into the national gymnastics team doctor who sexually assaulted athletes over two decades. Mr. Ray was addressing a Senate inquiry which featured tearful testimony from gymnasts. World News from the BBC. The sole surviving gunman from the Paris attacks of November 2015 has attempted in court to justify killing 130 people. The judge let the 14 defendants make a statement and Salah Abdesalam used his to say there was nothing personal against the victims in the bars, restaurants, the Bataclan concert hall and the national stadium. The British Prime Minister Boris Johnson has sacked several senior government ministers in a major reshuffle of his cabinet. Dominic Raab has lost his post as foreign secretary. Mr Raab was on holiday when the Taliban marched into Kabul. The International Trade Secretary Liz Truss replaces him. Our political editor Laura Kunzberg looks at the political implications. This isn't just been a reshuffle of tweaking around the edges. But nor has Boris Johnson chucked out the kitchen sink. You know, the Chancellor is still there, the Home Secretary is still there, the Health Secretary is still there. Now, the traumas of Brexit and those early times of Boris Johnson in office are in the rearview mirror. Now, the emergency of the pandemic is everyone hopes also fading. It's the beginning, perhaps, for Boris Johnson of a third part as Prime Minister and perhaps edging towards the halfway of what he hopes will be the first term in office, maybe with an eye on the next election. The police in northwest Nigeria say security forces are trying to locate a prominent traditional ruler who was kidnapped by gunmen on the road between the capital Abuja and Kaduna. Relatives of the emir of Bungudu from Zamfara state say gunmen opened fire on his vehicle on Tuesday and left the scene with several hostages. The first space mission crewed entirely by civilians is due to take off from Cape Canaveral in Florida shortly. Four amateur astronauts will blast into orbit on board a SpaceX rocket. The trip has been paid for by one of the crew, Jared Isaacman, a billionaire businessman. That's the latest news from the BBC.